Hey Bigger Pockets, it's Matt. So today we're going to talk about the biggest money maker for a rental property and how to make the most money out of a rental. And it sounds pretty silly because when you when you have a rental property, you're in the business of providing housing to your tenants. So the question is, how do you uh, attract and keep great tenants? Not good tenants, not okay tenants, not mediocre tenants, great tenants. So that's the first question. Let's talk about that first before we talk about how to attract and keep them. What is a great tenant? Let's talk about that. So here is what I think greatness is for a tenant, okay? A great tenant, obviously, this is real simple, okay? But it's not the only one for those of you that thinks it's the only one. They should pay their rent on time, okay? Um, okay? They should keep the property nice and clean. So it's, they should be nice, they should be clean as well. They should abide by the law. <laughs> Um, meaning no, uh, you know, sketchy dealings, no, uh, uh, you know, major, major legal problems with them and the property and everything like that. And they should also have just to provide, to carry this rent. I would say they should probably have a fairly good and upstanding, stable source of employment. That's kind of where this comes from. Um, and the last thing is, and this doesn't, uh, this is more like a general feel, but you'll know it when you see it, is they treat the property like it's home versus a place that they're renting, okay? Um, and like I'll give you some examples of people that treat their properties like it's home. If a tenant asks you if they can repaint the place, let them do it because that makes them home, okay? There's all kinds of provisions you can put in the lease. You can say, yeah, but you gotta paint it back, or I'll get, I, let me pick the paint, whatever it is, but let them put some of their own accents in the place because there's a higher probability of them staying in the property for longer. That's the, next, the last thing that, a great, that great tenants are and that they do is they stay a long time, okay? They stay in the property. So they will stay, they'll, they'll pay your rent increases, they'll you know, remain in the property for years and years and years and treat it as if it's home. I've got one tenant that's been in the property uh, for nine years. We had an apartment complex, we sold it, but the guy was there for 25 years, okay? So tenants like that will never move, they'll be great, they'll pay the rent on time, they'll be wonderful, you'll never hear from them. So this is what a great tenant is, okay? Uh, I would love to hear other ideas for great tenants you guys might have in the comments section down below uh, at the end of this video. So, this is a great tenant if you can, if it's defined, um, and I think that great tenants like this will keep you profitable and will uh, keep you stable in your rental property. Now, how do you find these folks? Let's talk about the conversation. So, here's how you attract great tenants. Okay. Now, this is by no means is this a way to uh, what I'm about to say is it a, is it a way to like just you know pick out certain people or to exclude me one or whatever it is but I do all my marketing for my properties all online why is that well I don't do ads in the paper anymore a lot of people still do that but I do all my stuff online because if you're going to find my online ad you've got to have a certain amount of um, you know, sophistication, you got to have a certain amount of your, of your wits about you to be able to know how to look on Craig. Even though everybody looks on Craigslist, you, you might say, oh, everybody looks on Craigslist. Not everybody does. Uh, look, you know, so put your stuff online. Consider, you know, truly a Zillow, all the other online advertisement spots, um, or they have softwares like a Folio or Rent Manager that will post your stuff to places like Trulia and Zillow and Hotpads and all that for you. And you still got to move it over to Craigslist. But I do all my marketing online. Some of it's paid marketing, some of it is free marketing. But I do it online so that I can catch people that are a little more sophisticated, a little more having their act together. They own a computer, that whole thing, and they're a little more stable and better propensity to greatness. And I promise you there's nothing for discrimination in there. There's no judgment. There's no nothing. So please don't slam me for that. But I do all my stuff online because there's a certain caliber of person I'm trying to attract for my rentals. Okay? Uh, the next thing that I do is I ask for tenant referrals. Okay? And I'll pay for those. So if I have, we have several apartment complexes. In those apartment complexes, I will go to my great tenants that meet these criteria, especially the law-abiding citizen one, right? And I will say, hey, if you happen to have a friend that's looking for a place to rent, I will, and if they apply for the property and we accept their application and they move in, we will pay you a fee. Call it 100 bucks, 150 bucks, give them a gift card, whatever you want to do. Um, so I ask for referrals because good people tend to know good people. Does that make sense? So 
I will go to my great people that meet these things, and I'll say, hey, do you know more great people just like you? And so I'll ask for referrals from, from those folks. That's, an, that's another one that we'll do. It doesn't have to be an apartment complex either. It could be down the street. It could be across town. It could be someone who's happy with you. And if you are a great landlord, which is a whole other conversation we can have in another video, what constitutes a great landlord. Um, but if you are a great landlord, they want to get you in touch with other great people that they have to get them a great place to live that they're happy with, right? Okay. So the next thing that we do to ensure that we have great tenants is now, this maybe just goes without saying to some of you folks, but there's other you folks that are guilty of what I'm about to say, as we screen the tenants. Now, some of you people, some of you folks watching or some other landlords out there, not any of you guys, um, when a tenant pays an application fee, you think that that's a bonus for you? You get to just put that application fee in your pocket and that's your lunch money for the week, right? No, that application fee should actually pay for a credit report that you should go and pay for and go and do a credit history, a criminal background check, and a uh, landlord eviction report so that you verify that these people are actually as great as they say they are. And they are paying their rent, they are good upstanding citizens and have reasonable jobs, and that they are law abiding citizens and they, uh, you know, all these types of things, right? Make sure that they meet some, of, some or all of your criteria uh, when you screen them, okay? So now, if you're gonna screen tenants, and I recommend that you guys do this, this is a bit of an aside, but just a good conversation, is that this is a repeatable process, and your terms for your screening are documented, meaning that you've got it written somewhere on our, you know, terms of exception are that you have to uh, make X amount of dollars of you know X times the rent in earned income, and that we want to see a credit score of X, whatever it is. Keep that in writing somewhere, just in case you get challenged if you decline someone. Um, but keep this in writing uh, because you all screen your tenants, of course. But put that in writing and uh, and keep it somewhere safe in case you get challenged. Okay, okay. So other ways to attract great tenants, you could do signage. You could do referrals, like I said. Uh, you could offer move-in specials. You can do all kinds, of, like a lot of people doing Facebook ads these days. So you could consider all kinds of other marketing efforts to uh, reach out to people. But I would do the majority of those paid marketing efforts here, online. So Facebook ads, uh, you know, online, maybe online newspaper ads is actually a lot cheaper than print newspaper ads, but consider that too. Um, so. You've got your great tenant. You've screened them, they're in, you love them, they, they make all your criteria for everything and they are showing up to your great tenant, okay, here's the problem, how do you keep them? Because just as much as you've got a great property and there's other landlords out there and maybe their friends are coming to them on a referral saying, hey, great tenant, my landlord Johnny over here wants you to uh, come and move in with them. So how do you stop them from moving out? Because the biggest thing that'll cause your property to go upside down or will cause a loss in your property is vacancy. Um, and vacancy and below market rent. Some people say, oh, expenses and stuff like that. You're right, expenses are a major part of cash flow for a rental property, but there's no expense I can think of that'll suck out eight to 10% of your, uh, of your annual revenue in one blank. Um, maybe real estate taxes if you're where I am in New Jersey, but, um, but uh, you want to keep good tenants so you can minimize vacancy. We would all agree on that, right? So here are a few ways that you can keep your good tenants. And again, it goes without saying, a lot of this seems obvious, but they you say common sense is not common practice. So the maintenance response time. If you've got a tenant that's had a leaky sink, for the last month and they keep asking you about it and they keep bringing it up and they got just some problem they've learned to deal with it's just been you know a problem for a while and they get a phone call from one of their great tenant friends that says hey I'm gonna get a referral if you come and move in with me you better believe they'll take it because it's like you know what I'm sick of dealing with the stain carpet that I keep asking my guy to replace or for the light that's that hasn't worked since I moved in here whatever it is take care of their maintenance requests and you know, even if, if it's a you know kind of like a minor thing, you don't have to take care of it the next day, but take care of it inside of a week or a month even if it's something, but it, communicate with the tenants on when you're gonna take care of these things. Um, and don't make them sit and wait around for you know just a simple request. And if it's a major thing, be Johnny on the spot and take care of it. Consider if you guys have more than say 20, 30 units, consider having a 24 hour answering service for your tenants because it'll make them feel um, like they're well taken care of, like they're safe. That, uh, that you know, if something happens on a Saturday night at two in the morning, God forbid, 
they, that you will respond and have an emergency call number that they can uh, get a hold of somebody on. Most landlords don't have that. There's services out there you can get for not much money uh, that will take care of your maintenance request for you. Okay? So the next thing you can do to keep your tenants, uh, to keep your great tenants, is to do preventative maintenance. That's different than responding to, hey, my uh, toilet doesn't flush or my sink's leaking or my light doesn't work, whatever. Okay? Preventative maintenance. And if you guys are not managing yourself, if you're remote managing or managing through a property manager, make sure they do this. Preventative maintenance is just every, say, six to nine months, whatever it is, doing a walk through of the property and just making sure things are safe and secure. You're not trying to find reasons to ding the tenants for fees or to come after them for little stupid stuff that they did to the property. You just want to make sure it's safe by your standards. Make sure it's in good condition. We do this, and our tenants are always grateful for the, uh, the walk through. By the way, it's a good way to get into the property. If you've got a tenant that's never calling you for anything, it's a good reason to get in and just do a quick inspection to make sure the place is in reasonable shape and they're not in there trashing it. Um, the last thing that we do, and some people will scoff at me for this, is some landlords don't believe in it, but I do giveaways. So I will give stuff to my tenants every here and again. Um, I will give them uh, a thank you for being a great tenant. We do a drawing uh, once every quarter, and we give the, uh, the winner of that drawing a gift card. The only thing you gotta do to be in the drawing is pay your rent on time for those three months. So if a tenant's paid their rent on time, their name goes into a drawing, we draw a name out, they get a $50 gift card. If they pay their rent on time for an entire year, we draw a name out of that pool and we give them a flat screen TV. One name, one person. The cost that we have versus the, to do that versus the goodwill that we have with our tenants, the excitement that it creates. We have tenants that call us to make sure that their rent is in. To say, okay, did you guys get my rent on time? Because I want to make sure that I get in that drawing. You know, it's, think about that. How many of your tenants are calling you to make sure that they paid you on time? You know, just to make sure. Um, so do giveaways. And I call this something that's a bit intangible, but it's called tenant happiness. And so I try and make sure my tenants are happy. And if they're not, what can I do? Some people in life just you're never going to make happy with anything. But I try and do my best to at least uh, make things a little better for them. So um, I just consider giveaways, consider other things to create tenant happiness. Now, you don't have to go giving away the farm for this, but find ways that in your budget you can create tenant happiness, okay? That's a big one. So, again, to sum it all up, you want great tenants, and you want great tenants to stay in your properties and renew their leases so that they, you keep them long-term in your properties because that was the best way, I think, to maintain and increase cash flow over time, okay? Uh, here are the ways to do it, definitions of great tenants, uh, ways that you attract them, consider doing online and referrals and keeping, keep the property in good condition and do what you would do what you can to keep them happy. So I've said a lot of my personal opinion in this video. So I'd love to have you guys give me your opinion, especially if you disagree with me. I love that. I love it when people disagree with me because it's a good conversation. So if you disagree, great. If you agree, great. If you learned something from this video, please write a comment. I'd love to hear from you. As always, 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 I appreciate you guys watching the video. And as I always say, please have a great and profitable week.